Hello and welcome to another Retro Cars Hardware Review and today we are going to be taking a look at the Ambernic RG351MP. Let's check it out. So here it is, this is the Ambernic RG351 MP and as you can see it's a beautiful device. Across the bottom we've got the dual micro SD card slots and a reset button and those stereo speakers. Across the top we've got two USB-C's in, one of them is used for an extra controller and we have our shoulder buttons as well. The whole device is made of aluminium or aluminium for Americans and it is painted in a lovely metallic blue. Just look at that. Taking a look at the top of the machine, you can see we've got our two analog thumbsticks, which also act as buttons. We have a very nice D-pad and very responsive buttons as well. Plus the whole thing is fitted with a motor. So you do get vibration for games that support vibration. How about powering it up? Well, let's press the power button and take a look. So you can see here, we have a custom firmware on this is a 351 ELEC or ELEC or ELEC and the reason I put a custom firmware on this is because the original firmware that comes with this device is absolutely awful it is really bad so you need to put a custom firmware on here uh, there are many options available I'll put a link in the video description down below it's a place where you can get them and to put a new firmware on here is very very simple now, as mentioned before, we have two micro SD card slots at the bottom, as you can see here and here. Now, this micro SD card slot is the one that hosts the firmware, and you can also put games on here and so on. And this one is gonna be used for basically just all your games and whatever, movies, music, whatever you wanna put on here. So let's take a look and see this thing in action and see how powerful it is. But before we do that, let's take a look and see what else we get in the box. So upon opening the box, we see we have the standard Ambernic style of protection. We've got the bit of foam there and the little baggie which the console comes in. And under the tray, we have the accessories. So let's see, we have the USB-C cable to connect up to a computer. We can use that to transfer data on and off the machine. We have some alcohol wipes. And the reason we have those is because it comes with a glass screen protector. Just check this out, if we can get it out. Look at that, a proper glass screen protector, none of this plastic crap. So we've got one of those, we've got a little manual in there and two little USB devices. This one is our Wi-Fi adapter, so we can connect this device online. So yes, it can connect to the internet. And this is a USB-C to normal USB converter cable, uh, converter dongle I should say. And hopefully this will allow us to use standard USB controllers on this device. All right, so let's get a look at the device closer up. So the first thing I notice on this device is the beautiful screen. Now I've got a very bright light shining at this, but you can still see it absolutely perfectly. The screen is really sharp and you can view it at pretty much any single angle you could ever want. I mean, take a look at that. You can see it perfectly on any angle. It's such a good screen. And as you can see, we have a lot of different emulators built in. Now, basically, you gotta remember, if you don't put the ROMs on, the emulators won't show up. So the more different ROMs you put into the folders, the more emulators which are gonna show up. So going into tools, you can see we've got all the usual stuff. We can also create the M3U files for PlayStation Audio which is good. We can go straight to RetroArch if we want to do it that way. So you can download new RetroArch uh, emulator builds and so on. We've got 32-bit and 64-bit versions. For some reason, uh, PSP is also linked here as well. But I think what we're going to do is go through the standard system setup like this. So we've got Sega Saturn there, Mega CD, Mega Drive. Basically, we've got all the consoles we could ever want, including ports. We've got some good ports such as Cannonball, uh, let's see, we've got Commander Keen there, Classics, Duke Nukem. Now, of course, you've got to put the ROMs on here so these games run, but we haven't got the ROMs on here, so uh, at the moment, these aren't going to run. 
So what we want to do first is take a look at PSP because PSP is always notorious for not working properly. And I'm going to connect up a separate controller and see if we can play this without having to use the controls on the machine. Okay, so what I've got here is an Xbox 360 controller. I'm going to connect this to the dongle on the back of the device. And let's see if this allows us to use the Xbox 360 controller on this device. Yes, it does. It's come up. Okay, so what do I do? Okay, hold down the A button to configure it. All right, here we go. D-pad. All right, just press the buttons on the D-pad and it configures everything for you. Alright, so into the PSP menu we go, and you can see that this device came with loads of PSP games built in. So let's just choose one at random and see how we go. And yep, this is working great with the Xbox 360 controller. No lag, well, there probably is some lag, but it's not really noticeable. And it's keeping a nice solid 30 frames a second there. That is not bad. That is uh, quite stable. Uh, a little bit of stuttering there. But not too bad. Okay, let's try out one more PSP game. Now again, I tried this game on the stock firmware that came with this machine and it was just stuttering all over the place, which just wasn't acceptable. But with this custom firmware, yeah look at that, it is pretty stable. So yeah, it looks like, oops, <laughs> it looks like PSP is not too bad and is a viable option for emulation on this device. Of course, it depends on the game. Some games are going to perform better than others. But I'm sure tweaking around the options will improve pretty much all games to a playable state. Okay, let's take a look at some Dreamcast and we'll go with a bit of hmm, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Okay, so I'm going to play this one with the actual D-pad on the device to see how it handles. Now normally it stutters on this section in most emulation devices. Yeah, that's pretty good. Alright, let's see. A kick, punch, punch, kick, okay. Yeah, not bad. So those controls are responsive. Oh, we can also use the analog stick as well. Got to say, I'm pretty impressed there. That's working very nicely. Okay. Let's take a look at another system. We'll have a look at original PlayStation next. Oh, well, that was a waste. <laughs> Alright, no analog controls in this game, only digital. Now it is looking a bit slow, and that's because when you start this game with the default cars, it is slow.
But yeah, that seems pretty smooth. It doesn't seem to be dropping frames. That's quite nice, actually. Yeah, looking good. Looking nice. Okay, let's do a montage and take a look at some other systems running on this device.
So this is Nintendo DS emulation and uh, let's just see if we can bring up the uh, little touch screen icon there and uh, let's see let's uh, zoom up that screen there we go so we can see what we're doing now how do we get out of here ah there we go Right, we can go back to that screen so we can see both screens at once. Now to bring up the touch screen option, basically what you do is you press the right thumbstick down and um, yeah, that brings up a little uh, touch icon there, see? Uh, let's just uh, zoom that screen up so we can uh, see that better. And here we can do all the touch screen functionality as well. So yeah, it's a fully featured... Um, emulation of the DS including touchscreen stuff alright let's uh, get back to the main screen now this seems to be moving quite jerky and I'm not sure how this game runs on a real Nintendo DS so maybe this is how it really does run I don't know so uh, to double check let's try out another Nintendo DS game Yeah, that is uh, kind of juddery. So it's nice to see Nintendo DS on here, but uh, yeah, 3D gaming certainly isn't going to work too well. And there we have it, that is the Ambernic 351MP, a really nice sturdy device that plays a lot of games really well. It also has a lot of nice extra features such as um, screen filters, scan lines, bilinear filtering and so on, which you can choose individually for each individual emulator or have it on for everything. Um, there are also a lot of games that may need some sort of uh, tweaking to make them run perfectly fine. Now in this video I've shown everything running at stock default uh, settings so you can get an idea of how it performs you know without messing around with any of the uh, options. But especially in Nintendo 64 and PSP and Dreamcast you're probably going to need to do some uh, tweaking with some settings to get everything to run really really well. Um, now I would have liked to have shown you Sega Saturn games but I can't get them to work and I've actually bought the BIOSes in this but for some reason I can't get them to run so I must be doing something wrong because this should be able to play Sega Saturn games as well. But yeah as you can see it runs a lot of stuff really really well. I do like the fact that we can now add the dongle up the top so we can have a uh, Wi-Fi so we can actually play things like Phantasy Star online using the homebrew servers and uh, play online on the move. That's pretty amazing on a device like this. Um, other games as well that have a uh, net compatibility can also be played online. It's so cool. Um, also the egg dongle to let you play using uh, USB controllers is also much welcome. Um, the device itself is very well built. It feels good in the hand and the aluminium frame on it, the aluminium body I should say, feels cool to the touch. Really nice premium feeling device. So I'm going to have a link in the video description down below. If you want to get one of these, check out the link. And until next time, guys, take it easy and keep on gaming. See ya.